Hello, welcome to Mowgli TV. Today we're going to talk about why I think that this, the MIDI Fighter Twister, is one of the best controllers that you can get for Residue. And let me say at this point that this video is in no way sponsored by anyone. This is 100% my own opinion based on my own experience. On a previous video, I went through how to choose your first uh, MIDI controller. So if you haven't seen that, I recommend that you do. I've been VJing for a very long time and during that time I've gone through countless controllers from several Codenovas that had every control that you could wish for on a single surface to the trigger finger, several keyboard controllers, the famous Behringer BCR which is in a way the precursor to the trigger finger to actually making my own controllers using things like Arduinos, Microbits and getting involved in using motion sensing to control the visuals. But over the years, I settled for the MIDI Fighter Twister for a number of reasons. Number one, easy to see. It's very compact. It's tiny. I mean, it's one of the smallest controllers you can get. And besides it being small, another important thing, it's really sturdy. It will stand the test of time. I've had it for a while. I've thrown it in a bag and I've never had any issues with it. The knobs feel as solid as they did on the first day and it's a rugged construction. You can trust it and rely on it, which is very important. I've had loads of issues in the past with MIDI controllers where they start failing halfway through a gig. So I recommend it for not just the size, but for the quality, which is something to consider, especially bearing in mind that this is not a cheap controller. I only recommend the MIDI Fighter Twister if you're fully committed to your VJ. If you're just uh, doubling in, uh, I recommend you get something cheaper. Reason number two is the endless encoders. If you're not familiar with the term, endless encoders are not just knobs that go from left to right. They turn around infinitely. This, although it's not an obvious thing to consider when you're first looking at controllers uh, makes a huge difference because it means that you can map the same knob to different parameters on your software without the knob jumping uh, from one thing to the other as the control assignment varies. For example, I've got a knob assigned to the opacity of the selected clip, let's say. So uh, once I select that clip, the LED ring around the endless encoder will tell you where on the opacity scale your clip already is. So there's two advantages to that. One is that you can tell where the opacity is just by looking at your controller. And the other one is that you can use that knob, as I've said, for any clip. And you'll know exactly where you are without even having to look at the screen, which is absolutely huge. It actually multiplies the capabilities of your controller by a lot compared to having normal knobs. Another great thing about knobs is that they can be high resolution. The standard MIDI protocol goes from zero to 127. That means that you've got only those steps as you turn your knob. This might be okay for a majority of cases. There's plenty of instances where finer control is not only something that would be nice to have, but actually required to do things properly. Let's say, for example, that you're assigning the knob to the angle of something. If you want to go through the full 360 degrees, uh, being able to set it to any degrees of your choice or even a half or fractions of a degree, it basically it becomes impossible with 127 steps. So the fact that you've got high resolution knobs that allow you to have a, a lot more control over these kind of parameters. And it's uh, just generally better for fine tuning your effects to get everything exactly where you want without actually having to dial in numbers by hand. The next reason, the customizable LED feedback rings. The MIDI Fighter Twister comes with a little application that enables you to assign any color and actually configure the controller in many ways, tailoring it to what you want to do. I can't say enough about having LED feedback on a controller. It allows you to focus more on your performance and less on your screen. You can actually be looking just at the visual output and be controlling what you're doing, getting all the feedback that you need from your controller. It also allows you to use the color scheme of your choice so that you remember what's what. You can have things like a, like red LED to signify that something's off, green to signify that it's on, or however you want to do it. Another good thing about the Twister is the mix of buttons and knobs. All these knobs are actually also a push button and you've got some extra buttons on the two sides 
of the MIDI fighter twister. This uh, allows for a uh, varied configuration for different settings where you might want to switch things or you might want to trigger things or you might want to modulate things. So it covers all that, which is great. Another great asset that the MIDI fighter twister has is that it's actually got four pages of mapping. So you can multiply all those knobs times four very easy to switch between and it's very easy to know on which page you are bearing in mind that you've got the LED feedback rings. And finally some words about why my favorite controller is not the APC40 like it seems to be the case with a lot of VJs and it's become somehow a standard that is rarely questioned. But the APC40 has got that grid of buttons which basically mimics the way the rest of them works in terms of having a grid of clips you can scroll up and down with the APC but there's something that for me has always been missing in that kind of controller which is to actually know exactly which clip it is that you're triggering because there's no proper visual feedback on the grid of buttons they turn colors but there's no way to know which specific clip you've got on there for me that impairs the functionality of it Nowadays, I use an Asus ZenBook Pro Duo, which has got two touchscreens, not just one. And basically, that makes a lot more sense to me because I can trigger the clips directly from the touchscreen, seeing the thumbnail of the clip. So it's a foolproof way of triggering your clips. So that's one reason. But before I actually had this laptop, uh, I used to take a small portable touchscreen with me purely for that reason. And all the thumbnails are there automatically without you having to do absolutely anything for it, which is something to be said. So the MIDI Fighter Twister all in all has a few other peculiarities that make it really stand out against other controllers, but I'm not going to get into too much detail about it as I've described the main points that I wanted to put across. If you're interested in learning more about the MIDI Fighter Twister, I suggest you go to their official website where there's a lot of information and a lot of very helpful videos that go through all the peculiarities that this controller has. I hope you've liked this video. Uh, please uh, like and subscribe as it really helps my channel and hopefully I'll see you next time.